Till now, we have seen the three different categories or sectors of people working. The primary sector, the secondary sector and the territory sector. Under the primary sector, we have discussed that people coming under the basic occupations or directly acquiring from the nature are called primary occupants or primary sector workers or dependents on the primary sector. Once we move on from the primary to the next level, like using the raw materials from the nature and manufacturing most important valuable goods is called secondary sector. As most of the work is done in the secondary sector in the factories or the industries, it is rightly also known as industrial sector. After moving on from these two, the marketing, the transportation, the services, the medical, the financial, all the things are service oriented. So we got the third sector named as service sector, but actual name is territory sector. Now comparing the three sectors, how can we compare the three sectors? In primary sector, we have people taking the things like milk and all. So how can milk be compared with a brick? And how can brick be compared with the services which are provided by a restaurant bar attender who comes and attends you something for your service? How can the hospitality in a hotel can be brought into comparison with a brick or a milk? So brick is different, milk is different and the services which are provided by a hospitality or a hospital is different. So how do you bring this at a same stretch? How can we compare the three service sectors or three sectors together? Is it easy task or is it a difficult task? Yes, it is a very difficult task earlier. But now the economists have come down with a good solution for this. Economists have started to calculate everything in terms of currency, in terms of economy, in terms of money. Let us now calculate, for example, let us take milk. If you take one liter of milk, as per today's cost, it is ranging from 40 to 45 rupees. In the same way, brick, each brick 5 rupees to 10 rupees. Then coming to the services provided, for every bill, we pay certain amount. So that amount comes into consideration. So when we take in common to all the three sectors, we have the currency coming in common, the calculation coming in common. Once the calculation is taken into criteria, that will be the final call. So let us take into currency the consideration then we can conclude every sector using that particular terms. So, for example, when you are taking something, for example, let us take wheat. When wheat is taken into consideration, whatever you sell, whatever you get should not be added. There is a clear cut demarcation like what should be added. Generally, we get confused like milk is the end product, so we are adding it. In the same brick is the end product, so we are adding it. So finally, when we are getting the services, services are the end product, so we are paying for that. In the similar way, wheat, a farmer sells wheat, farmer sells his wheat for rupees 8 per kg to the factory. So the wheat cost was rupees 8 per kg. Next from factory. Factory made the wheat into flour. So wheat flour was made and this is sold for 11 rupees per kg for biscuit manufacturers. Eight rupees to 11 rupees. Again, the biscuit manufacturer has made biscuits and got rupees 60 to the consumer. So rupees 60 is the final product what we got at the cost of the wheat. So 50 he has made 4 biscuit packets and he sold to the customers and he got this much amount the consumers. Now when we add as I told you before we should not add everything whatever you get in terms of economy. You cannot add 8 rupees and 11 rupees and 60 rupees. Final product what we are getting is only 60 rupees. There is a small twist here. The farmer what he is selling is the primary product 
or basic product the base for making of the biscuits is wheat this is a primary product then once the primary product is being transformed from its original shape to another shape then it this becomes intermediary product this is an intermediary product so this intermediary product will definitely be not considered as a basic product so these are basics this is got transformed from the basic form to the floor so this is an intermediary product because it is again not the final product and from here we got the final product that is biscuit this is the final product so now the same wheat which is in the basic form got into intermediary form that is intermediary form wheat flour and then the it turned into final product that is biscuit that is the final product so the final cost of the product is rupees 60 that is the income what we got for the products so this categorization is very very important you should take only the end product or the final products cost only when we are calculating for any products cost we cannot take or add 8 11 and then come to 60 because <coughs> the same wheat which was sold for 8 rupees got its shape changed and then it became wheat flour so it was sold for 11 rupees 8 rupees was sold for 11 rupees so 8 and 11 are intermingled here again the wheat flour is again sold for 60 rupees so the 8 and the 11 are got added for this one and they made the biscuits and they sold it so the final one what you are getting is a combination of basic and the intermediary products cost in that way we have to take the calculation for any product so the basic products cost intermediary cost products together will be reflected on the final products cost that's how we can make the final estimation of the cost or final conclusion of the cost of the final product if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbsc syllabus